What if that nagging feeling in the back of your neck was real? What if those hands reaching out from the dark that you believed were there, were there? What if the monster in the basement really existed? And what if there was really something under the bed? Would you have the courage to face your fears? Hello, brave souls. I'm your host, Paul Rondo, and tonight's story is called Grief That Can't Be Explained. Written by me. I hope you enjoy. When I was 18, I was in a car accident. I was in a coma for three days. I was the only one that was critically hurt during the accident. I became obsessed with the idea of being able to help people after this. I didn't have the aptitude for medicine, so I figured I'd become a police officer instead. In my first few years as an officer, I met my wife. We ended up having three beautiful children. Life turned into somewhat of a grind until one call changed my life forever. I had been on the job for about 15 years at this point. My oldest child was about to graduate high school, and my wife was working her way through college to get her bachelor's in finance. A call came over the radio for some suspicious activity at a local grocery store. I told dispatch that I'd check it out and made my way over there. When I arrived, I could see some flashlights from inside. I requested backup and was told to stand by until they arrived. About a minute into waiting for backup, I could hear a scream coming from inside the building. I asked backup when they'd be there, and they said it would still be a few minutes until they got there. I ended up making a judgment call and entered the building. I couldn't see the flashlights anymore, but I could hear whimpering from what sounded like a woman. I walked toward the sound of the whimpering, found a woman strapped to a chair in the back of the store near the deli. As I got closer, I could see that she had been badly beaten. Whoever did this must have just stepped away for a moment because the instruments used to abuse the woman were still splayed across the table near her. There was an array of tools spread across the table, including hammers, knives, and pliers. Everything you would imagine someone might use to torture information of someone. I stepped closer, and the woman became aware of my presence. The one eye that could still open finally opened, and she saw me. It didn't take long for her to start freaking out, pleading for help over and over again. Without thinking about what a person who did this could be, I ran over to the woman to untie her. I went to radio back to dispatch, but as my hand touched the mic, someone opened fire from the other side of the store. I tried to grab the chair the woman. I tried to grab the chair the woman was attached to and drag her behind the deli, but she was struck four times in the chest. I ended up jumping over the deli counter and returned fire. I radioed back to dispatch that I was being shot at and said I needed backup. I could see the lights from the other car getting close to the building. I went to stand up again to return fire, and was hit in the head. When I awoke, I didn't recognize where I was. I looked around the room, and was surprised to see my mom sitting next to my bed. I asked her where my wife was, she gave me a look like she didn't know what to say. I asked again, instead of telling me where she was, my mom asked where she thought I was. I told her the last thing I remembered. And as I did, my dad walked into the room. I stopped talking right away and thought for sure I was dreaming. There was no way he was here right now. He had been dead for the better part of a decade at this point. My mother told me I was too young to have a wife and kids. She told me I was 18 and that I just had a bad accident. I told her that's impossible. I just saw them this morning before I went into work. I had kissed my children and wife goodbye before they went off to work and school. We sat in silence for what seemed like an hour before the doctor walked in. He tried to talk to me, but I didn't say anything. He said the accident wouldn't have long-lasting effects on me, and that I could be discharged in a few days. Again he asked how I was feeling, and I couldn't muster up the energy to say anything. I was discharged a few days later, and was sent home with my parents. I see a therapist once a week now, to get through my trauma. I have the grief that I can't even explain, and I can tell the therapist even has a hard time wrapping her head around it. I grieve for a family 
that only ever really exist in my mind. I barely speak anymore to anyone else, and most days I just cry thinking of my family. <laughs>